The Cowboys are one of those clubs that most teams like to beat. But today, the folks are playing the one franchise everyone points to when the schedules come out. Dallas hosts the Los Angeles Raiders, one of the few teams that holds a lifetime winning record against them. And they'll be going into battle with reserve quarterback Steve Pillower, who's replaced the injured Danny White. One recently healed cowboy who will be a big help is their all-time leading rusher, Tony Dorsett. Various ailments have kept Dorsett from piling up his usual numbers. But with running mate Herschel Walker a bit hobbled, Tony should provide an eyeful for fan and foe alike. So far, the vision conjured up by Coach Tom Flory's Raiders has not been the scenario they had hoped for. At 5-4, and four, the Raiders desperately need a win to stay competitive in the wild AFC West. Once again, they'll pin their hopes, at least to start with, on their enigmatic quarterback, Mark Wilson. So it's America's team, the boys in the white hats versus the swashbuckling shadow figures in silver and black. The battle lines have been drawn, and it's a battle both teams need to win in order to stay afloat in dog-eat-dog division races. From Texas Stadium in the Lone Star State, it's the Los Angeles Raiders and the Dallas Cowboys on the NFL Game of the Week. The very first play of the game was a forerunner of things to come. In a half of wash in foul-ups, bleeps, and blunders, the Raiders wasted no time in contributing to their menagerie of mistakes. The Raiders kept the ball, but were pinned back so deeply in their own end that neither fiery rhetoric or careful play calling could dig them out of their hole. After a Randy White sack forced a punt, Dallas used a series of short runs to set up the game's first score, a 20-yard field goal from Rafael Septia. Following the three-pointer, the Cowboys returned to their rugged defensive ways, stuffing the Raiders on nearly every play. Dallas showed why they're second in the league in sacks as they pillaged Wilson's pass pocket, then gave the ball back to the offense. Today, the offense would mean the one and only Tony Dorsett. Dorsett would get his yards, but so would Steve Pillour, a third-year quarterback who has moved the Texans with surprising effectiveness since taking over for Danny White. passed, ran, even juggled his way into scoring position, setting up Septien's second field goal try. But this time, the Cowboys did not cash in. It was the first of many missed opportunities for Dallas, but they didn't have long to wait for another chance, thanks once again to the defense. Number 24, Everson Walls, picked off the deflected pass. But then the Raiders were all too happy to return the favor on the very next play. Number 26, Pro Bowl safety Van McElroy grabbed the interception, the first theft against Dallas after 100 straight passing attempts without one. It gave the Raiders excellent field position. But Mark Wilson and wide receiver Jesse Hester just missed taking advantage of it. Still, the Raiders earned a consolation prize as kicker Chris Barr nailed a 45-yard field goal. Early in the second period, the game was deadlocked. But abundant opportunities were waiting for Dallas and the chance to break the game wide open. 
Tied at three, Steve Pillower seemed determined to break the log jam and quickly, firing short passes that turned into solid gains. But down in Dallas, it's been the custom to turn to Tony when yardage is needed. And that's just what the Cowboys did. Dorsett's impact was obvious. So when the Raiders keyed on him, Delure found some broad boulevards open to his scrambling runs. But at the goal line, Dallas gave the ball to a rusty Herschel Walker, and the results weren't what the Cowboys had hoped for. Walker's fumble was recovered by Lester Hayes, and once again it appeared that Dallas had squandered a golden chance to storm ahead. But when Mark Wilson tried to get out of the hole by going airborne, the larcenous Dallas secondary was lying in the weeds. This time, the culprit was number 27, cornerback Ron Fellows. And with the pickoff, the Cowboys' defense had afforded the offense yet another chance for a score. This time, that chance was not missed. Number 84, Doug Cosby's diving catch got the ball inside the 20, where who else but Tony Dorsett was ready to escort the ball in for the touchdown. During the drive, Dorsett passed O.J. Simpson to become the fifth leading rusher in NFL history. Even more important was the lead that Dorsett's darting dash gave the Cowboys. With seven minutes to go before the half, Dallas had the lead and would soon be threatening for more. In a half when both teams combined for eight turnovers, a Dallas sack claimed another takeaway with defensive end Ed Jones and Jim Jeffcoat combining on the steep. Dallas appeared to take advantage of the mistake immediately as Pillour scrambled around right end for what would have been his first rushing touchdown of the season and his NFL career. Instead of a fat 17-3 lead, the Cowboys lost the score and 10 yards from the original line of scrimmage. Guard Glenn Titansor was flagged for holding, wiping out by penalty the first of two Dallas touchdowns in a five-minute span. But Dallas didn't droop. In fact, they got even tougher. The Doomsday defense ranked second in the NFC, and the Raiders could do nothing against it. Dallas is also first in the league against the pass, thanks to good defensive backs and a relentless pass rush that forces quarterbacks into mistakes, like this one committed by Mark Wilson. By the time Wilson got up, he watched in dismay as Everson Walls had his second interception of the game. And to make matters worse for Los Angeles, Walls took it all the way back for an apparent score. But once again, Fortune smiled on the silver and black. An illegal block negated the touchdown. And although the pass theft stood, the Cowboys had been denied another six points. Oddly enough, these were the first two interceptions of the year for the normally prolific thief, Walls. Still, Dallas had the ball in Raider territory and seemed touchdown bound when Pelour and Dorsett combined on a long screen pass. But the Raiders proved they could play takeaway too with a pair of late interceptions to stop Dallas drives. 
Pickoffs by Jeff Barnes and Sammy Seal, number 43, twice stopped the Cowboys inside the Raider 20-yard line. The half ended with Dallas still ahead 10-3, but they knew the margin should have been much bigger. It's never too wise to let a good club like the Raiders stay in a game. And Dallas coach Tom Landry knew that sooner or later, his team's squandered chances would come back to haunt them. The Raiders were not pleased. They trailed 10-3 in a game they virtually had to win to remain in contention for a playoff spot in the AFC. And they were lucky to be that close. It was time for that special brand of silver and black defense to right what was obviously wrong. Jerry Robinson's interception was the spark. It gave the Raiders their first offensive possession of the second half at the Dallas 23-yard line. The quarterback would no longer be the mistake-prone Mark Wilson. It was now 38-year-old Jim Plunkett, the man of many comebacks, who it seems has been rescuing the Raiders from defeat for as long as the memory can recall. Plunkett's second pass hit the jackpot, a 20-yard scoring strike to wide receiver Doki Williams. Number 85. Less than two minutes into the third quarter, the Raiders had tied Dallas at 10. Los Angeles had turned the game's ninth turnover into the game-tying touchdown suddenly and dramatically. And it was the oldest quarterback in the NFL who had accounted for the score. Jim Plunkett had done it again. But this game was far from over. It would take more Plunkett magic to decide the outcome of this tense matchup. The Raiders' defense had been the catalyst, but on Dallas's offensive possession following the touchdown, the Cowboys retaliated, featuring the rough, aggressive running of Tony Dorsett. Yardage was hard to come by, but Dorsett bore the brunt of a drive that chewed up 71 yards in 13 plays, consuming more than five minutes off the third quarter clock. The result was a 20-yard field goal by Rafael Sepia that put the Cowboys back in front, 13-10. Midway through the third period, the Raiders trailed by a field goal. This game had now settled into its pattern of hard-hitting defense supplemented by just fits and starts of offense. But that was to be expected in a game of this magnitude. The Raiders' defense would now take full control of the game, totally shutting down the Cowboys' league-leading offense. Oh sure, Palua ran for one first down on a scramble, but that would be Dallas's final first down in the entire game. And six minutes still remained in the third quarter. After that, it was all silver and black. No matter what Dallas tried, the Raiders had an answer. Even Pillar's poise and quick feet in avoiding the Raider pass rush could not produce any offensive momentum. All of Dallas's well-intentioned efforts ended with the angry thud of Raider defensive might. Fitting then that the Cowboys' final offensive play of the third quarter was a turnover, the Lure's fifth interception of the game. <laughs> Say 
Safety Van McElroy's second interception of the contest put an exclamation point on a third quarter dominated by the Raiders, even though they still trailed 13 to 10. That would soon change. Jim Plunkett still had a lot of work to do. Yes, he had begun the second half in fine fashion with a touchdown pass. But since that glorious moment, the Raider offense had been unable to do much of anything. In fact, the touchdown pass to Williams was one of only two Raiders second half first downs against the Dallas defense that had been just as stingy as its Raider counterpart. But on the initial play of the fourth quarter, Plunkett began a drive that would give the Raiders the lead for good. he went to Doki Williams for 21 yards. Then he showed that Plunkett grit on a third down and five, running for a first down in that desperate and unique style that is his signature. Soon after Plunkett's rumble came perhaps the game's most important and most unusual play. It was third and 13 for the Raiders. They had to convert to keep their drive alive. Todd Christensen caught the tip ball for a 17-yard gain, and the Raiders had their first down in Dallas territory. The play deserves another look for two reasons, its importance in helping to determine the outcome of the game and its strange resolution. Plunkett's errant throw was tipped by Dallas's Bill Bates, but the ball went straight up in the air, and Christensen was not only lucky, but alert enough to be in the right place at the right time. The Raiders still had 40 yards to go to get into the end zone. No problem at all. Time to call once again on the fleet feet of swift Doki Williams and the still big play arm of the venerable Jim Plunkett. The result was a leaping end zone catch by Williams, who was surrounded by three Cowboy defenders, but managed to come down with the ball cleanly. In a game that had produced few big plays, this was by far the biggest. With just over 10 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, the Raiders had gone ahead for the first time, and they led 17 to 13. Jim Plunkett had done it again. Sure, he had a lot of help from Williams, one of the AFC's finest deep receivers. But the 16-year veteran quarterback had made the necessary plays. Maybe he didn't look pretty in the process, but the bottom line is always winning and losing. And more often than not, Jim Plunkett is on the winning side. The Raider defense made sure the touchdown would stand up as they continued their assault on young Pillur. The third-year quarterback, who has shown signs of becoming a solid NFL player, simply did not have a chance against the Raiders' outstanding pass rush. With three minutes left in the fourth quarter, the Cowboys had a third and 11 deep in their own territory. Pillure gave it all he had, escaping the pressure that had been in his face all game. But he could not get the ball effectively to Mike Renfro. And the Cowboys were a beaten team. They did have their final shot on the game's last play, but Pillure's desperation, he really had no chance to be completed. The Cowboys were losers at Texas Stadium for the second time this season, as their record dropped to 6-4, and four, putting them in a precarious position in the NFC East, where they are now two games behind the division-leading Giants and Redskins. On the other side, the Raiders had persevered in what amounted to a must-win situation. Los Angeles had already four losses coming into this game with Dallas. A 
Another in their playoff aspirations may well have been iced. But the Raiders, who had died in Los Angeles a week earlier against the AFC West leading Broncos, lived in Dallas. And they now remain in position to make a second half run at the playoffs. <laughs>